Hello everybody and welcome to vlog number three on this farm. So I have been speaking to Peter Wood and he basically gave me a really good suggestion. He said, why don't you do what you did before? Because it was successful. Build your way up to owning a farm again. So you start off by maybe buying a small tractor, then save up to buy a piece of land, uh, rent some machinery from either the dealership or from Peter Wood himself uh, to harvest the land and maybe cultivate the, uh, the land as well. So it's a good idea. You don't actually have to own the farmhouse first. You could just have the plot of land and a few pieces of machines and rent the rest of it. It just depends if it's going to be a profitable thing to do. So I think it's a good suggestion. I think what I'm going to do today, since it is my day off, really, unless he needs me to, to do a bit of work. It is a Sunday after all, but yeah, uh, it's still quite a busy time of year. He would like me to, uh, well, he suggested that I go down to the dealership and just basically browse the uh, the older tractors. Obviously, he said older tractors because the newer ones I could never afford, but I guess I could afford a new, very, very small tractor, but I wouldn't want to use £52,000 up in one go. So I think my budget would have to be something like 20000 maximum. Should be, really. Anyway, he did say that I could use his pickup. The only problem is I don't know where his pickup is. Ah, there we go. So what we're going to do is drive down to the dealership in the pickup truck. And, yeah, basically my intention is to come back with, or at least put an order in for a tractor. Uh, if I put a deposit down or something, then that would be a step in the right direction. Of course, I do need to remember the way to go. It's, um, it's left out of here. Left again, then turn right, then turn left, then turn left, I think. I have pretty much got that horrific map that he drew. It's just stuck in my brain. It, it, I just can't forget how basic it was. <laughs> it, it was so basic. But yes, I guess it was good because it did get me there in one in one go. Uh, it didn't really take me many attempts to find it. So I'll see you down at the dealership. Let's hope they have plenty of tractors in stock. Okay, so here we are. And I was just having a good think about which fields he might own. He is going to get me a map apparently, a farm map to show which fields are his so we can just basically have a good look around and familiarise ourselves with the different fields. But I don't think he has that many fields here. I'd say his larger farm has most of them. Right, they've got quite a lot of tractors in today. Let's just pull over here. And let's have a bit of a tour. I don't know if those ones over there belong to customers. They could do, especially that one over there. Looks too set up ready for doing some farm work, some root crop work or something uh, to be for sale, but it could be, not too sure. So, hmm, these are oh, a bit too expensive and a bit too big. I might be better off going to an auction actually, looking at this. That one there could be a good one, but then, like I said, it might be owned. So, anyway, regardless of uh, the price, let's just have a browse. This is a very new Massey Ferguson 7720. Class Axia 920, Challenger, MT845E, Fent 1165 MT, Quad Track, absolute beast of a machine, 620 there. Oh, this is more like it. Got some smaller stuff. The Herleman Prestige, the MB Track 800. Actually, that is a real consideration. It's got the front three point linkage and PTO. Is it a PTO? Yes, it does. Um, got a Dutes, Agri Star 6.61. Oh, nice. Ford 6.8.10 and a Fast Track 42.20. Well, I think out of these, if I was to ask for a price, I'd go for the Mercedes M MB Track just here and the uh, the Ford. Or that one over there. Because, like I said, I don't know if anybody actually owns it. 78.40. And there is this little one, this little two wheel drive track, the T6, in the corner. But again, it might be a bit too expensive because it's too new. Even these could be too expensive. You know, dealer prices, it's cheaper to buy privately. Sometimes, it's not always, but usually it is cheaper to buy from an auction or something like that. I suppose, yeah, I shouldn't roll out this tractor here. That's quite nice as well. You see, what I'm trying to think here is I need something which I can use to get around in, sort of as a vehicle, like I did with my 135. Um, and maybe, maybe these are a bit too big, all of them. 
the 135 is just so compact. So I don't know. I think I'm going to go and inquire about the um, MB Track and the Ford. So let's just go and see if they're for sale to begin with. And maybe get a key or something and have sit in them. Possibly have a drive. They part, they're pretty much parked out in front of the door. They really are lacking space here. Hello, anything I can help you with? Yeah, I'd just like to inquire about the price for the MB Track and also the Ford 6810. Okay, I'll go and take a look at the prices for you. Yeah. Just wait for him to return. So they're a Case dealer, New Holland dealer, and whatever that is, by Coon dealer? Yep. Okay. I'm not too sure how long they're going to be. Okay, I've just got the prices for you. Now the MB track, that one's £15,000 plus VAT, and also we do have the Ford at 6500 plus VAT. Okay, so can I go and have a sit in them, maybe have a quick drive? Unfortunately we can't allow you to drive it, but we can allow you to sit in it. Okay, so he's given me the keys. I'm not allowed to drive them, so I guess I shouldn't start the engine either. So first of all we have the MB track 800. It's a bit of a squeeze. They really are packing these tractors in tight. So here we go. It's actually a very clean interior. Very nice. But yeah, 15,000 plus fat. I guess it's not unreasonable because it's a pretty big machine. Multi-purpose and everything. You could do quite a lot with this. It's still within my price range, actually. Even with the VAT on top. So, yeah, I'm not going to rule this out. I'm going to have a look at the Ford as well. And yeah, we have the Ford 6810 just here. Which looks to be in a very very good condition it might be restored or it could just be preserved very well over the years possibly so here we are inside this one again it is actually very very tidy i mean it's been looked after incredibly well or like i say it's possibly been restored to a very high standard uh, but either way it is good so including the vat on this i think it was 7800 because it was six and a half without the vat so that is a very reasonable price I would say for such a, a good condition tractor so it's difficult you kind of feel like saying I want both but then I don't know oh, it's tough that is tough I, I think I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards the Ford just because it is far cheaper that one there is 18,000 this one here is 7 800 so I think probably I'm going to buy the Ford let's just go and ask a few more questions about it what did you think of the tractors then? Did you like them? Very good. The Ford. Do you know its history? Well, I can't say I know too much about it. It's got about 2,000 hours on it. Came in yesterday. Do you know its actual history though? Uh, like what kind of farm work it was doing? Was it on, I don't know, cultivation work or mowing or something like that? I can't say I know too much. I do have somebody in the office who might know. Well, if you can find out, that'd be good, but obviously it doesn't really matter too much. Well, I'll go and speak to uh, Mark, who's in the office. He probably does know something about it. Okay, well, playing the waiting game again. It would be so nice to just be able to go and buy one of these tractors. But then if I was buying one of these tractors, I'd already have a big farm, because you, you would not buy one of these for like, three acres or whatever it is I'm going to be buying. Um, also going to have to wait for a piece of land to come up for sale, because there is nothing currently, as far as I'm aware. I think Peter would have mentioned it, but yeah, you just never know. There's so many small fields around here from what I've seen from driving around I would say at some point there is going to be something suitable oh here it is it was used on a 200 acre farm and it was doing a bit of mowing and also it was used to do a bit of trailer work oh, that sounds quite good then nothing nothing too uh, strenuous for it although it does need to work a bit well I think I have made a decision I would like to buy the Ford please I'll get the paperwork sorted out six and a half plus that Right, everything is sorted out. I've now handed the money over and I am now the proud owner of this little Ford tractor. And I now have the key and I'm allowed to drive it, which is nice. So there's only one issue with all of this. I did come down here in Peter Wood's uh, pickup truck, meaning I now have two vehicles that need to go back to the farm. So I think the best thing for me to do is to maybe just put this back at the farm first, so if I take the Ford tractor back and then make sure the pickup truck is parked in a parking space over there and locked securely uh, then we can come back down here in whatever vehicle and one of us can drive the other vehicle back while the other one drives the pickup back I probably made that sound very complicated so yes, what I need to do 
as I've said, which leaves this to warm up a bit. Yeah, we're gonna put this in the parking space. Just over here. Customer parking. I'll put it at the end so it's not in the way. There we go. And yeah, we're just gonna have to come back and pick it up a bit later. So we can now take the Ford 6810 for a spin. And I've got to say, it's a nice thing to drive. A very nice thing to drive. So it's left out of here. If we were to go right, it would be going to a grain merchant. And then, yeah, right out of here. So I don't know what kind of jobs we're actually going to be doing with this tractor, but at least I now do have some kind of transportation. Before I just had nothing, I'd have to walk everywhere. I know it's not ideal to be travelling around in a tractor, but I did get along fine with the 135, although I think we do have to travel a bit further between different places over here. So, anyway, I'm sure I'll get used to it. It definitely feels like a very smooth tractor to, to drive, very fun to drive. But just like the 135, it isn't that fast. But it does have a cab, which is a bit of a bonus, really. farm. So obviously I need to go and tell Peter that his pickup truck is slow over at the store. There wasn't really much that I could do though. He couldn't exactly come and pick me up because, well, then uh, well, I suppose he could have done, but yeah, his pickup was taken. He would have to bring a tractor anyway. So if I go and put this over here for now, I'm going to speak to him about where I should keep it because it's not my land and I don't want it to be in the way. But I probably will be using it quite a bit anyway, even on his land. So it shouldn't really be an issue being anywhere in the yard area. We'll soon find out. My pickup is still at the store. In that case, we'll take the 7726. By any chance, did you see my new tractor down there? Your new tractor? I didn't know you were getting one. Yes, didn't you notice the T6 wasn't in the yard this morning? Isn't it? Oh no, it's not. How could I be so unobservant? Wow. Uh, hmm. When did it go? It was taken this morning, early on. It's being replaced with a new T6 two-wheel drive. A two-wheel drive? Is that just because it's cheaper? Partly, but most importantly, because it's just for hay work, I don't really need four-wheel drive. It's always nice to have a new tractor. I can only dream of one. Yes, well, it is the T6125. You might have noticed it. I did. Anyway, shall we head off in the uh, tractor? Let's go. Okay, well, I should probably drop this off here. Before we do go, let's just take these out. Right, and we are now ready to, to pick up Peter. And then, well, I don't know if he's picking up his tractor today but uh, obviously it's over there and here we are there it is over in the corner indeed well I think if I take or should I take the tractor back yep you take the tractor I'll take the pickup okay let's go as you can see, Peter is uh, heading off before us, but he's going to be able to go much faster than us because this is a pretty fast tractor, but still nowhere near the speed of, of that. <laughs> so I'm going to definitely fall behind very soon. So far, so good. 
Unless he's just going to drive at a very similar speed to me. Maybe he will do. Now he's getting in front of it. Um, yeah, so fans that he's got a two-wheel drive new T6 on the way. And we've already looked at it without even realising that it was going to be his tractor. So let's replace the, the T6 which he had at Letton. Which I did use a number of times. Um, I think it had the baler on it. I can't remember. But yeah, I think it had a baler on it. So, when we get back to the yard, I will most likely be, well, looking into what I can really do with my new Ford. Yeah, I've really fallen behind, which was kind of expected. Um, so, he did mention yesterday that they were going to do some drilling. or well, they are doing some drilling already. I think they're drilling some of the surrounding fields, some of his other workers. Um... I did cultivate a field yesterday, so I don't know if there's going to be any more work for me to do in the fields today, more cultivation work, but we will find out. Put this back over here. And oh yes, he did speak to me about where to put the fold and he said just put it back here, not an issue. So I should probably put this back onto the... Uh, 7726 should be fine right so I'm, I'm feeling quite hungry it is time for food and then after that we can look into uh, maybe doing something with the Ford mmm that's better yeah I was uh, really starting to feel quite hungry if you want to do something useful with your new Ford tractor there is actually an old seed drill over at the farm you went to yesterday is there? I didn't see one when I looked in the sheds. I, I mean, relax, I don't blame you for having a look around. But yes, there is a small seed drill in an open fronted shed. It should already have seed in it. Interesting. Okay, well, in that case, we will do that. Thank you, Peter. Let's jump into the Ford. And we will go over to the other farm and see if we can get it attached to this tractor. As for which field he's going to want drilling, I would imagine the one we did yesterday, the one we cultivated yesterday. The only thing which would be unclear is the crop type. But then again, whatever seed is in it is the seed you'd imagine he'd expect us to drill. Yes, I sort of forgot it would be such a long journey over there. <laughs> 19 miles per hour. At least it allows me to take in the sights a bit better. And I was going to stop here actually. We'll stop and see this trailer and this ruin. Yeah, I think it's a bit beyond it. I don't think I could uh, ever buy this and restore it. Oh well. One day I'll have the money to buy a farm. Or at least a house. A house is a good start. Maybe I could just buy a house and then just have some land somewhere else. There is the farm on the top of a hill. A very sensible place to put a farm, actually. Because uh, then, well, it's much more difficult for it to flood. Although I think, really, a small hill isn't going to make a big difference. For example, Dennis's pub at Letton, that was on a slightly higher piece of ground than my farm, and everything got obliterated. Maybe one day we should visit Letton, but it might be a bit too devastating to see. So that's the shed we put the bells in, that's a silage pit over there, and I did go through here yesterday, and I looked in the other shed, and I'm sure it was empty, that one over there, so, oh hang on, there it is. I hope this tractor is going to be able to uh, lift that up, it should do, but yeah, I'm not too familiar with the horsepower of this, I have no idea how powerful it is. Everything except for the hoses. There we go. Right. So we have wheat. It does have wheat. It's full. Wow. It's full of wheat. So I'm just going to go and confirm that he wants the field which we cultivated yesterday drilling. And then we can obviously start. And I think it would be doing him a big favour. Maybe I'll get a free tank of diesel. Although, if he pays me normal day's work, then that's fine. He's paying for the seed. Now, 
does stick out a little bit wider than the tractor, but not so much so that it's actually wider than one side of the road. So it's not too difficult to drive with this on. So you're just a little bit wider. Okay, so next stop, Peter's house, and then second stop, whichever field he wants me to drill. Okay. Feel free to drill the field that you cultivated yesterday, although don't do it all. Okay. Yeah, I have a big drill which will be going in the field anyway, so you don't have to worry about burning all your fuel. Right, so I think, from what he said there then, I might just see how we go with the seed, and maybe when the drill is empty, that'll be enough. Because if he is going to have his big tractor going to there anyway doing it, then there's not much point in me spending hours on it with my little Ford. It is just really to give my Ford a bit of a, a bit of a drive trying it out in the field. But when it comes to me owning my own piece of land, this will be the main and only tractor, so it is going to have to do everything. Then again, the piece of land will probably still be smaller than this field just here, which, which we cultivated yesterday. So, uh, yeah, it, it wouldn't take us too long. But there you go, first time in the daylight, actually, that you've seen it since I cultivated it. Gate opened, there we go. There's hazards turned off, and it is time to do a bit of drilling. So maybe if I stay on the left side of the field. I need to do a fairly neat job of it too. It's pretty good. It's running absolutely fine. Then again, it's not really like ploughing or anything like that. We're not really having to put much power into it. We're not turning the soil over. So I think that is the best idea. Just keep going until we run out of seed. Because it's not a very big hopper. It's not going to last forever. And although he might not realise it, I would say it's still doing him a favour. Especially if it's costing me the fuel. Right, so I've been going for some time, and I've covered quite a bit of ground, but I think there might be enough in here to be able to do the whole field. I don't know the reason why, really, he doesn't want me to do the whole field. I think I'm going to give him a ring, just to find out if I can finish it. I might not be able to finish it, in which case he can finish it off anyway, but um, I feel like I can still do quite a bit more yet. So here we go. Hi Peter, just wondering if you did want me to finish the field because I have loads of time left and I also have loads of seed. Oh, that's fine. No problem. If you want to finish it, that's fine by me. Okay, well, I'll keep going until I run out of seed. Okay, Dagwin. It's not a problem. Right, in that case then, let's continue. Well, this is the final piece that I think I can do. We only have a very small amount left in the drill. Uh, you can't really see the other side of the field, but we are actually almost there. It's probably about four-fifths of the way across that we've done. Um, but yes, as I only have a very small amount, 
I can't continue and we have no more seed. So he's just going to have to finish it off himself. But I have really done a lot for him there. So he should really appreciate it, hopefully. But as it's a Sunday and I wasn't even supposed to be working today, I'm going to go and relax because it's now almost half six. So, yeah, anyway, the next vlog is obviously going to be next week. And by then, I would imagine all of his fields will be drilled. And also, it will be winter, sadly. So, um, yeah, it's going to be very cold, like I should think. I'm not a fan of winter. You can probably tell. Right, so that is all done. Well, at least it's as done as I, I can get it. There is a bit of tidying up that's going to have to be done. Can just finish off this piece here. Empty as much as I can do. Although it's actually pretty good anyway. So, let's just leave the field. I will also shut the gate. And I park in the space where I was parked before. I don't know who lives there. There is a house almost opposite the yard. And I have absolutely no idea whose it is. These are things we're going to find out in the future. As I discuss different things with Peter, possibly Dennis, uh, we should find out more information about the area. Not too sure if Dennis would know though. But anyway, here we are. Back at the yard. And a field almost fully drilled. It's a shame it couldn't be fully drilled, but yeah. He wasn't even expecting us to do what I've done. So, let's just get it shut down. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this vlog. And until the next one, see you again soon. Bye for now.